So, we need to learn how to grip a semi-auto. I know you're on revolvers all the right. time, so I figured, you know, we'd, we'd uh, trade uh, skills here. But it's usually a common question when people get onto semi-autos because there's a lot more going on here when you're shooting. It really is. I've yeah. got reciprocate. You've got reciprocating parts moving around. You know, that doesn't happen on a revolver. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, I'll be honest. The last time I shot a semi-auto seriously was probably five, six years ago. So. Yeah. Well, there's, a, there's been a lot of advancements in grip, you know, and I think when we get down to it, We'll, we'll go through a couple different techniques and a couple myths that are that are really out there. All right. And then see what works best for you. And this is one thing that we need to keep in mind is with the different strategies of obtaining your grip, you might see different results on range. So it's about fine tuning what works best mm -hmm. for you. So first off, your dominant hand, we're just going to take that and place it as high up on this grip as we can, filling in that beaver tail there. So you don't want any gap there. Right. So what happens normally is people will grab and have this gap here. So then when we fire, the gun has a place to move as it runs through its recoil cycle. Right. So we want to get up as high up as possible. Okay. Once we do that, we can wrap those three fingers around just like that, giving us ample room for our offhand support over here. Now, if you notice, I'm keeping my thumb up. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will kind of hold their their hand like this because it feels a little bit more natural as they grab something, okay? We want to keep that thumb up because we need ample room to put our offhand support. And if our thumb is in the way, what happens is we cross our cross over the top of our thumb, we create a lot of space and we're not getting the engagement on the side of the pistol. The more friction that we can have on this frame, the more the better recoil control that we're going to have. Right. We want to get as much meat on the gun as possible. Exactly. Now, when we get to this and the offhand support, I'll just take those four fingers there. We're going to place them on the three fingers that are wrapped around, and we're going to rotate the heel of our hand into that blank spot on the side of the frame there. And if you notice, my dominant thumb is on top of my offhand thumb, mm -hmm. okay? And those thumbs are pointed forward. Now, there's a, there's a technique here that usually helps some people with accuracy, and it's what do you do with your thumbs? Because we're not, if we got really tense thumbs here, it's not really doing much for recoil control or anything like right. that. So what I like to tell people to do is try two different methods. Once you get that grip, squeeze your thumbs pretty tight, shoot, and then relax your thumbs. Concentrate on squeezing the grip with the bottom two fingers down here mm -hmm. and see what your accuracy is downrange. Okay. Okay. Now I've seen videos of guys who will demonstrate how you don't need your little finger for recoil and shoot with their pinky out. What should I be doing with my pinky finger? The pinky finger, I like to, that's where most of my pressure is coming from. Right. Because when we think of energy and what happens, what happens when we shoot this gun is energy is leaving the end of the barrel, forcing that reciprocation back. So physics tells us how do we have the most leverage over energy is finding its distance furthest away, right? right. And the distance furthest away from our muzzle is right here at the bottom of the gun. Okay, so I'm actually squeezing with my pinky quite a bit. And when I get my offhand support on here, I'm actually rotating the palms of my hands downwards. That so makes sense. I'm going to feel the muscles in my back kind of tense up a little bit as I twist down a little bit. So that's going to create a lot of pressure here, giving me a much better recoil control overall. Okay. Now, when you get into it, it's hard to figure out what you want to do with your thumbs. Okay. A lot of people will try to keep them out of the slide. I would say, yeah, I mean, if you're coming coming into it and getting a little bit more comfortable, that's perfectly fine. But you can have your thumbs up in this slide and it's not gonna affect anything. It's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna affect the, the you know reliability of the gun or anything. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. I like to keep a high thumbs type of grip because mm -hmm. I feel like I get better recoil control over it. As I drive my hands down, I feel like I lose control and it actually starts to interfere with a lot of my controls and my trigger. Right. So. Uh, so I'll go ahead and kind of display what this looks like. First, though, I want to show you kind of the thumbs method, uh, just to uh, ensure everybody that nothing happens when you actually put your thumbs up here on the slides. Load and make ready. And then we're going to test that theory of having that high thumbs. So we've got high thumbs on. I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just touching the slide right now. All right. So now I'm actually going to push pressure on the side of the slide here just to show that it's not going to affect any of the recoil. So I'm actually pushing in. It's Seems still working fine. Yeah. Okay. Now when we look at this grip, you can watch as I cheat down this pistol. Watch what happens to my slide when I try to shoot fast. 
You get a lot of recoil. You see an exaggerated. I'm watching that dot come way out of the screen here and then come back in. But as we get high up on this gun, we ensure that offhand support from our top. We're squeezing down with our back here. And then now watch. So Much better recoil control. Yes. So I'm going to top you off here, and you can run through a couple of the options, and we can see where you're at. All right. So I'm going to start, and I'm just going to take a, I'm going to take a poor, an intentionally poor grip. We're going to go low on the gun, and I'm going to have my thumbs tucked over, <laughs> like I would if I was shooting a revolver. All right. And we're going to, I'm going to try to track my recoil on this steel target. All right. That yeah. didn't look very good. It didn't feel very good. Yep, and you can see the off shot there. So let's go ahead and now get my hand all the way back up on the grip. I'm going to get a nice positive thumbs forward grip. Now one thing I like about the GX4 is this little bit of texture yep. right here on the gun. That's where I like to put my thumb normally when I do shoot a semi-auto. So let's see how that tracks for me. That Much tracks better. a lot better. I can get the gun on target a lot faster. Yeah. Yep. I think, I'd like you to try that. Go ahead and try that relaxed thumbs method there. All right, let's so relax. We're not driving anything down. Right. We're keeping a nice relax, and I want to feel that tension right in the back from sucking those arms down. There we go. There we go. Now look at your shot groups there. Yep. You're keeping those same speed. Now you're keeping them at a six or eight inch kind of uh, circle there under a really fast split time. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea of rolling the, the palms of, or the mm -hmm. bottoms of my hands together to try to bring that tension in through my back. And keep in mind, people, this is a micro compact made for, you know, daily carry and things like this. This is not a competition speed gun. No. But we're able to shoot this gun incredibly fast and incredibly accurate when we have the proper grip on this. Absolutely. So yeah, well, I hope you learned something. Get out on the range, try it yourself, figure out what works best for you.